YouTube channel. I am an actress, writer, and founder of Blue Room Productions. I post blogs, behind the scenes commentary on my projects, and my films. But before this video was over, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and the bell button to stay up to date. So in 2019 and 2020, I lived in South Africa for three months. And in today's video, we are talking about those experiences, what I was doing out there, and all the things that I learned. Between 2017, which is when I got back to Chicago, and 2019, I was working. I had put out two short films, had an art show, and put out an experimental project on social media. I was really putting myself out there and wanting to let the world know this is who I am and this is what I do. I was on the back end of all this press for my Instagram script series, Nights. I got a lot of great feedback. A lot of people really enjoyed that project. And there was a particular organization in South Africa that reached out to me because they wanted to post it on their page. And so I thought to myself, why not? And that was honestly the catalyst for me moving to South Africa. There was a film festival happening in Johannesburg and some of my work got into this film festival. The film festival that my work got into was called the Africa Rising International Film Festival. And I had this idea of what if I just go out there? <laughs> you know, I didn't want to experience this accomplishment in the US. I wanted to see it with my own eyes. I wanted to see how all of this hard work paid off. And that project that got into the film festival was actually behind the silence. I was so happy because I had went through so much trying to get that project completed. I had spent so much money and I thought to myself, I want this to not mean something, but I want it to go somewhere. When you're putting yourself out there, when you're making work, you want to see your work flourish. And so to see Behind the Silence get into this film festival, I was so happy and I was very appreciative. It made the journey so much worth it. I was working a nine to five. There was this balance and I didn't want to continue treating my art like a side hustle. That's what it felt like I was doing and I wasn't happy about that. And so I quit my job. <laughs> I can be impulsive sometimes, you know, when I see an opportunity, I go for it. Sometimes you only get one shot. Sometimes an opportunity only comes once. I don't want any regrets. I was about to embark on a different path, on a new journey. I felt that this is going to be different. And it was. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard. Once you have located your seat, we ask you that you please step out of the aisle. So the passengers behind you can pass you. This will expedite our boarding process. So I'm gonna show you my room. It is a bit of a mess, but this is my room. And then this is a balcony that I have. And then I'll move this out the way. Down there, that's the pool area that you had that I showed you in the other video. And that's the door. And that is it. So that's what I think. I just, it's very, it's very inspiring. Very inspiring. And what are some lessons we can take from filming the show? Perseverance. Just keep moving forward. It's hard because it has to be. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. 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 And they no longer are formulating words and sentences. And so I just thought that was just so. It was just so deep to me to understand, you know, to, to hear that, yeah. that their child just literally just stops talking. so good because it's like yes my project is getting exposure I'm able to share it with an audience outside of 
my backyard or I can share my project with an audience somewhere else. I can expose myself. I'm letting people know this is what I do. Once again, this is the benefit of thinking outside of the box. You get to create your own lane. You get to create your own opportunities or people will open up a lane for you because they see that what you're doing is different. You could be the first to create a particular category and that's simply because you're the one that started it. After those two weeks at the hotel, I moved into my apartment in Mabonang. That is still in Johannesburg, but it's a neighborhood and I found my apartment through Airbnb and I stayed there for the duration of my time. Mabonang is called the City of Light and it is a really cool retro area. It's very popular. particular evening I went out I went to this club and we're in the VIP area and I'm listening and watching I'm just in awe of everyone I was introduced to I'm a piano music for the first time if you don't know what that is look up DJ Mapurisa, Cabaza de Small, The Jazz Disciples that's a good start <laughs> So the DJ scene is an extremely popular scene in South Africa. It's just the way they blend their music that I love and it just fits my vibe. It, there's a house mix, but it still has an Afrobeat vibe to it. I don't really know how to explain it, but I really enjoyed the party scene. I saw some really dope female DJs there. I went to so many parties and let me tell you, South Africans know how to kick it. They know how to party and they've got really good. <laughs> I don't know why I'm whispering, but you get the point. <laughs> city you have a lot of Millennials modern-day people out there and that's not the Africa that you see on TV on TV they show you people that need water and a pail or something and that's not true and so when I was out there I thought this is the real Africa it's not what you see in the media and unfortunately the people that have oppressed people of color are the ones that are controlling the messages they're the ones that are controlling the media and it sucks which is why you have to go out there for yourself. You have to go see it for yourself. You have to go experience the world for yourself so that you can see the differences of what you're being fed and then what's true. So I saw DJ Black Coffee at a rave in Brafmutin, also known as Bram. And that was my first time experiencing a bunch of black people at a rave. I know it sounds weird, but here in the States, we do have raves, but they're not for us. 
and they're actually really boring, to me at least. this beautiful moment you know Miguel was there it was Solange Busiswa and just different artists that are popular in the South African music scene I didn't have to know who all of the artists were to enjoy them I was just enjoying being there and experiencing black beauty and being that I did Afropunk in Brooklyn Afrochella in Ghana and then Afropunk in South Africa there is beauty all over the world, but there is black beauty everywhere. And it made me appreciate even more being a black woman. You see thousands of people come together to celebrate themselves, celebrate unity, celebrate each other, celebrate the culture, celebrate your freedom. South Africans and African Americans are a lot alike because when I went to the apartheid museum, I felt like I was at the Civil Rights Museum or something because the apartheid is very much similar to the Civil Rights Movement. And it was in that moment I realized we are more alike than we are unalike. We have so much that we can share, so much that we can create together. <laughs>
right, well, that's all for now. There's a lot more to talk about, so much more to cover. This will definitely be a part two. So if you want to see more and hear more about my experiences in South Africa, please do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell button. Also follow me on all social media handles, which are in the description box below. And I'll see you next week. Thank you.